Okay then my friends, we have reached the end of this series now and we've successfully built something with Copilot and I know this application doesn't look great in terms of design and the functionality is quite basic but my goal in this series was never to make a stellar application in the last couple of hours but instead to show you how AI can be incorporated into your workflow with Copilot and with better guidance, style guides and even some wireframing you could definitely use AI to make something which looks much slicker and has a lot more functionality. This was really just a very simplistic dummy app to show you the different tools, techniques and features available to us. So this is my preferred way of working with AI in a kind of hybrid approach where I work on one feature at a time and dip into the code myself to make edits when I need to. And I just wanted to now talk about a few things I consider important when you're working with AI encoding and the implications it might have. The first one is that AI is not perfect and it is in no way at the moment a replacement for a good developer. So I don't think using AI should be a substitute for learning to code because if you don't know what the AI is coding on your behalf, then it's going to make things tricky for you to debug in the future or manually add your own features or even take over when the AI gets things wrong. So I firmly believe that even though AI can be good at coding, you shouldn't give up on learning how to code manually and you should continue to pursue those skills. Another reason it's beneficial to know how to code is because it makes you better at steering the AI in the right direction when you're using it to make applications. Imagine you have an understudy coder that's helping you code a website. Well, you would want to point them in the right direction when they're making changes to the website, not just leave them to it. So it's important you understand the code that they're doing so you can steer them in the right direction. Even if you're 100% using AI to write the code and you're not touching the code base yourself, if you understand what the nuts and bolts do, it's going to make your prompts much better and your guidance to the AI much better. And you're going to know which tools to reach for when your application needs them rather than letting AI pick them for you. And I think eventually what we'll do is probably, as a community, coalesce around a more standardized approach to prompting when it comes to coding that incorporates some kind of quasi-natural semi-formal language because natural language on its own is ambiguous, right? It can be interpreted a number of different ways, especially by AI models. If I was to write a prompt to do something and you write one to do the same thing, we'll probably write it in a different way. An AI might approach each one completely differently and we could end up, therefore, with two sets of completely different code. So I think we might land on something that's a kind of hybrid prompting language, which is much more formal and is less ambiguous in the future. And for that, I imagine having coding knowledge will definitely be beneficial. I also want to touch on the impact I think that AI is having on learning when it comes to not only programming, but other industries as well, because especially in programming, I think now a lot of people, new coders and to a lesser extent experienced ones, are relying on AI to solve all their problems for them. And I think problem solving is a massive part of learning how to code. And certainly when you solve a problem that you've been grappling with for a while, you get a big sense of pride when you solve it. AI has kind of taken that away a little bit. And I think we're going to get lazier as an industry in some respect when we rely on it too much. I know that even back when I was learning to code, there were similar ways of skirting around problems. One of the things I used to always do was to just Google jQuery snippets and paste them in, hoping it worked. But it still required some form of problem solving. I would still have to look through the code, know what it does, kind of, and I'd have to grab the right snippets. So although I think AI is good, it's only going to get better at coding as well. I would still encourage you to grapple with coding problems yourself and keep your skills fresh. And don't always reach for Copilot or whatever other AI tool you might use when you get stuck, at least not right away. And finally, I'm gonna say this, you're still responsible for whatever code AI produces in your project. So be cautious about handing the reins over completely. Be the annoying boss that peers over its shoulder and just review every single line of work it does. Well, maybe not every line, but most of it. And with that, my friends, we have reached the end of the series. I really hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please don't forget to like the videos and subscribe. Hopefully, I'm going to be able to make some more AI content in the future. So definitely stay tuned for that.